welcome back to lesson three. We are going to look at expectation and variance of a random variable. These are properties that help us, help us to determine the average value that is going to be taken by ra the random variable and the spread of the observed values from some point of reference like the mean itself. So starting with the <coughs> expected value, this is one of the most the important things one would want to evaluate about a random variable because it gives us the point at which the average of the observations are. For instance, you could be interested in knowing the average price of a computer. You could also be interested in knowing the average value of the number of rolls in a die. This value is found as the average of all possible values weighted by how much by, by, by weighted by how often they occur and these weights now are contributed by the probability. We define expected value for both the discrete and continuous cases. For our random variable x, the expected value is given as the summation of all values of x of the random variable itself multiplied by the probability. But if you have continuous case, then we, we, we integrate x multiplied by the PDF of x. You notice that here we talk of a summation of all, 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 all x multiplied by the PMF because it's discrete. And then we talk of uh, some uh, integral of our values of x, of x multiplied by the PDF of x. With this, we have a theorem here that if x is a random variable with probability px is equal to x, and we have another function which is an expression of x, then and, and, and g of x is a really, really valued function that is, takes values from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers, then the expected value of g of x is simply you get g of x and replace it for x in the previous expression so that you have g of x, probability of x, then g of x, probability of x for summation in discrete and integral in continuous. Another theorem, if x is with the probability distribution this, then expected of a constant is a constant. If I have a random variable x and it's PDF and I want to know the distribution of, uh, the, the, the expected of five as a constant in the distribution, then it's five. Then expected of an expression of x, say g of x, this takes this form, then you'll have to apply expected in that case, if you have expected of A of X plus B, then this means that you get A, because it's a constant, then expected of X, then plus expected of B. But we've already seen that expected of a constant is a constant. So this is A, then expected of X, then B. So that expected of X can also be written as we use the symbol mu of x. So this is the same as a mu of x plus b. That is how you get the expected of an, an expression of x. Now another theorem is that if you have a constant times g of x, then you just get the constant times the expected of g of x. And then if you have expected of a g1 plus b g2, where g1 and g2 are equal, uh, expressions in x, then it's just the same as taking a g of x times b g of x. And those proofs are expressed here. Expected of a means you get c. Expected of c means c multiplied by the pd of, of x. Uh, that is c, then integral over all values of x of p of x. And we said if this is truly a pmf, then this is 1. So it's like you're multiplying c times 1. Then for this case is as I've illustrated there, so that you have integral over all x, ax, bx, then the PDF of x. So if you apply the PDF, then you have the first part, that is a PDF of x, then the other part, then a comes out as a constant and you remain with a, the mean of x plus b. Then in this other case, the same way if you apply the integral, k comes out as a constant, you have this, and then for part four, the same way, now variance and standard deviation. The, let x be a random variable with a, a mean of expected x is mu. The variance of a random variable, and actually the, the variance of a random variable symbolizes the 
spread of values from the mean. So when someone talks of variance of x, then they are talking about the second moment minus the first moment squared. And actually, the first moment is actually the mean. So variance of x, which is normally abbreviated as sigma squared, is simply expected of x squared. This is how we get moments. The second moment is expected of x minus the mean squared. And this can also be shown from if you have expected of x squared of x minus mu squared then this is the same as getting expected of x squared minus mu squared. So this is the expression, the basic expression for variance, and it can be shown that this is true as follows. Expected of x minus mu squared implies expected of x minus mu, x minus mu, from the concept of squared means this occurs twice. This is the same as expected of x multiplied by x minus mu minus mu expected uh, minus mu x minus mu. So that this is expected of x squared minus mu x minus mu x plus mu squared. And this is the same as getting expected of x squared, if we apply expectation, uh, minus, mu is a constant, so it comes out as a constant, expected of x. Then we have minus mu again, expected of x plus mu squared. And this is the same as expected of x squared, but expected of x is the same as mu, so you have minus mu squared, minus mu squared, plus mu squared, of which these and these cancels out, and then we have the variance of x, which is equals to sigma squared, is the same as expected of x, minus mu squared. So those two sides of the equation hold that way. Now the units for variance are square units. The quantity that has the correct units is standard deviation denoted by sigma. So if this, if sigma squared is denoting variance and standard deviation is the square root of variance, then sigma alone is supposed to signify the standard deviation. Now theorem variance of this is equals to this, which is actually the proof we just derived. And then we have another theorem here that we need to prove that if you have the variance of an expression ax plus b, then this is simply uh, a squared variance of x. Now, when we say that we are getting the variance of ax plus b, Treating ax plus b as x, then it means that we should get the expected of ax plus b squared, we minus the expected of ax plus b square this. So now, we need to solve this so that we see whether it gives us this. Now, this means the expected of ax plus b, ax plus b, then minus, if I apply expectation, then I get a expected of x plus b because expected of a constant is a constant, then I need to square that. So from this side, then I have expected of a squared x squared 
plus ABX plus ABX plus B squared, then minus A mu plus B squared. Of, of course, this can be expanded as a square equation so of x. We've said that this is the same as expected of x minus expected of x squared. It's important to note that this is the mean of x squared and the square is uh, above here, meaning whatever is inside the parenthesis is the one that we are going to square. But in this case, it's only x squared. So we are going to treat ax plus b as x. And if we treat it that way, then variance of ax plus b is the same as expected of ax plus b squared minus expected of ax plus b, the, the whole of this squared. So that, then this transforms into expected of ax plus b multiplied by ax plus b, then minus, the, we can apply expected inside first so that we have a expected of x plus b, then we will eventually square this one. So that is, if we expand this, then we are going to have a squared x squared plus abx plus this and this becomes abx again, this and this becomes b squared. Then minus, now a expected of x is mu, so this is a mu, then plus b. We'll square that. Then if we apply the expected, we have a squared is a constant, expected of x squared, then plus these and these can combine, so we have 2ab, then expected of x, which again this is mu, then plus b squared, then minus, this one can be expanded into a squared mu squared plus 2ab mu plus b squared. So that now we have a squared expected of x squared then plus 2ab mu plus b squared minus a squared mu squared minus 2ab mu minus b squared and some some of these cancel out, this one cancels out, this one cancels out because they are the same thing. So we have a squared expected of x squared minus a squared mu squared. You notice that a squared is a common factor here. So that you factor out a squared, you have expected of x squared minus mu squared. And we've already defined this as the variance of x. And therefore, this is the same as a squared variance of x. So we notice that from here, we are making a conclusion that the variance of a constant is zero. Anytime you're getting the variance of a constant, then the result is supposed to be zero. Now we have some two remarks here. One, the expected value of x always lies between the smallest and the largest value of x. Of course, if I have 0 and 1, then the expected of x will be around 5. In computations, we bear in mind that variance cannot be negative. So there is no given time we will calculate the variance and get a negative result. We can look at an example here we are given that uh, x follows uh, the distribution as shown in that table. We need to find the mean and the standard deviation. And first, before we go to the solution to this, we notice that x here is discrete. So we are going to use the summation symbol and not the integral symbol. So x 
probability of x. x is taking values 0, 1, 2, and 3, with probabilities 1 over 8, 1 over 4, 3 over 8, and a quarter. So to get the expected value, since x is discrete in this case, then expected of x is equals to summation of all values of x, x, probability of x is equals to x. So simply multiply each x and the probability and sum them through. So 0 times 1 over 8 plus 1 times 1 over 4 plus 2 times 3 over 8 plus 3 times 1 over 4. So this becomes 0 plus 1 over 4 plus 6 over 8 plus 3 over 4 which is actually 0 plus 2 over 8 plus 6 over 8 plus 6 over 8 which becomes 14 over 8 or 7 over 4. Then we need to get the variance so that we can square root the variance to get the standard deviation and we've defined variance of x to be equals to expected of x squared minus mu squared and we've already gotten mu the variance from the other side and therefore we need to get expected of x this implies summation over all x x squared then probability x is equals to x if expected of x means x probability of x then expected or expected of x squared means x squared probability of x in this case we have 0 squared times 1 over 8 plus 1 squared times 1 over 4 plus 2 squared times 3 over 8 plus 3 squared times 1 over 4. So this becomes 0 plus 1 over 4 plus 12 over 8 plus 9 over 4, which is the same as 0 plus 2 over 8 plus 12 over 8 plus 18 over 8, which is 32 over 8 or 16 by 4. And therefore, we can go back to our original formula for variance. We're saying variance of x is equals to expected of x squared minus mu squared. This will be 16 over 4 minus 7 over 4 squared, which is actually 16 over 4 minus 49 over 16. This becomes 64 minus 49 all over 16, 64 minus is 15 over 16. So this is the variance and therefore the standard deviation will be equals to the square root of 15 over 16. We have more examples and exercises for practice and uh, we can now look at the mode, the median, quartiles and percentiles. So another measure commonly used to summarize random variables is the mode and the median. Mode is the value of x that maximizes the PDF. So the value of x for which f of x is equals to zero. So if you're given a, a PDF, say f of x is equals to a half of x, then if you're looking for the mode, then you need to look for a value of x such that one over two of x is equals to zero. And you notice that x is equals to zero. So the mode of this PDF is zero. Then the median is the value such that half of the distribution lies to the left 
of m and half to the right. More formally, we say that if there is a value m such that the CDF of x at m is 0 0.5, then m is the median. So it's like a value that divides the, CD, the PDF into two equal halves. Then for the lower and upper quartile, then we'll be looking for a value, say Q1, such that the CDF is 0 0.5, and Q3 such that the, the, the CDF gives a value of 0 0.25. And of course, the probability that X lies between Q1 and Q3 is just 0 0.5, that is minus 0 0.75 and 0 0.25. Let's look at this example, a random variable x has the PDF given by f of x f of x is equals to 2x x in the interval 0, 1 0 otherwise so for us to be able to answer the questions on lower quartile, middle quartile, in which the middle quartile there means the median and the upper quartile, we need to get the CDF, of which we said you get the CDF by integrating from the smallest value of x to some point x of the PDF. So in this case, then, I'm going to integrate from the smallest value of x is 0 up to some point x of 2x dx. In this case, this becomes just x squared. Then replacing 0x, we get x squared. So when you ask for the lower quartile, then we are being asked to get f of x at some point q1, such that the value is 0 0.25. So in this case, then we are looking for q1, such that x q1 squared is equals to 0 0.5. This means that Q1 is the square root of 0 0.25, which is actually 0 0.5. Then for the upper quartile, for the upper quartile, we are looking for Q3 in F of X at Q3, such that the value is 0 0.25. So Q3 cubed, Q3 squared, sorry, is 0 0.75, and therefore Q3 is equals to the square root of 0 0.75. And then for the median or the middle quartile, then we are looking for M such that F of X at M is equals to 0 0.5, and therefore M will be, M squared will be equals to 0 0.5, and therefore M is the square root of 0 0.5. That's how you get each of those expressions. We have some exercise there, and uh, that is the end of lesson three. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.